Anthony Schwartz has been one of the more intriguing late round picks for the Cleveland Browns and Cleveland Browns fans to kind of wonder about what his future is in this offense because he does bring a lot of physical traits to this team that were not there or weren't there in the levels that they wanted in before. Also, when it comes to this Browns roster, another area of intrigue is who's going to be on the bubble after the draft and after everything the Cleveland Browns did in the offseason. So we're going to talk about that. But before I get into that, I want to make sure I give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members. And as always, I start with Michael Matik, the most dangerous man in Cleveland, DJ Marino V, Cleveland Cart, Matt H, Greedy Shoulder, Gemini, Liam Freewin, Fight Dirty 74, Yo Yo, Matt Lloyd, Paul Wilcox, Hundo Magnifico, Rob Ferron, Kyle Stouffer, Lukey from Munich, Dever. Off, J Guy 101, Musty Taco, Joe Bobby, Brad Cabo, Dylon W, James McGinty, Arenda Hall, Rex Kaufman, Chad Gimme, David Malinato, Andrew Sadeo, Dylan Hill, Josh Bendor, Jalil Salim Jr., Martha Crustnut, Mark M, TJ Showman, Stuart Moore, Bubble Regretti, Anthony O, Cleveland BCI, Robert Jermaine Jr., Dave Mike May, John Cummings, Andrew Hirsch, Curtis Bear, Batman Rush Sharir, Barack Kumar, John Albert, Beerman 069, Masayua, Buds of Roland, James Nemo, Mac House, Reeve Hurst, Philip Wilcoxon, Marie Viver, Keith Anderson, Sean Barron, Goggles Pizano, Corporal Nick Lopez, John Gazzano, Hello, Nick Nasty, Ian Willicker, Colin 216, Anthony Latham, Christian, Matt Bond, Dave Strong, Michael Stone, Soul Train, Charles Work, Billy, Michael Holdenack, Moose Gentry, Austin Z, Mark Bennett II, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, IT Rex, Greg Ehlers, Austin Boland, Kirker Bard, Jesus Serrano, Chris Fong, Pick Down, Browns Backers, Mark Kahn, Johan Hilf, Kevin Johnson, Max Aldojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Again, guys, thank you so much for your support. And also, if you like what you see here on this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. Now, let's talk about Anthony Schwartz and who's going to be on the bubble for the Browns roster this year. Now, Anthony Schwartz is a very interesting prospect because of his speed, right? He runs a 4-2-5, a legit 4-2-5. 40. I would be interested to know what kind of time he would have ran at the combine because I think it could have been even faster than that if he had the normal kind of cycle to prepare and, and run in that 40 because he is a legitimate track guy, an Olympic speed track guy. But as we know in the NFL, there has been more than one person to run a sub 4 3 40 that has not really made waves in the NFL. John Ross, Dre Archer, all these guys kind of come to mind when you think of somebody with incredible speed, but has not found a way for that speed to really translate to NFL production. So a question is, will Anthony Schwartz be the same? And also, what kind of player are the Browns going to be axing Anthony Schwartz to be in this offense? And I think that's a very interesting conversation to be had, because when I do look at the tape on Anthony Schwartz, I see somebody who is growing as in, in their ability to route run. I don't think he's inept. I think he can be a decent route runner. My issues with him as a full-time wide receiver are more along the lines of he has some focus drops. He doesn't necessarily have the most consistent hands, and he's not somebody who has great ball skills, right? Those are the things that I think ultimately could hold him back in his development as a wide receiver. But I don't think the Browns are looking at him as a pure future number one wide receiver guy. I think they're looking at him as a gadget guy. Now, what's a gadget guy in the Kevin Stefanski offense? Somebody who takes end arounds. Somebody who, you know, runs the streak on the backside of a bootleg pass just in case to keep the defense honest. Usually, that's been occupied by what was the fastest player on the team, Odell Beckham Jr., and it's kind of a waste of Odell in that way because Odell is much more than just a very fast wide receiver, but since Odell was the only really fast guy you had, he had to take that role. Now this opens up Odell to play the slot more, to be able to be in different positions or run different routes because you're not necessarily dependent on him to be the guy who's going to crack the defense open with his speed again now you're obviously going to run Odell deep down the field like that's not going to go away but the number of times that you just use Odell as a pure decoy because you just need somebody to go deep to clear out the rest of the field I think 
you hope that Anthony Schwartz can get to a point to where that's what you do with him. If you look at what the Browns did with Brashad Perriman in 2018, I think that's very comparable to what you would want Anthony Schwartz to do, even though Brashad Perriman in 2018 better ball skills than Anthony Schwartz at this time. So if he can hold that role down, that's going to be determined in training camp. But if he can and be a little bit more than just somebody who could take some end arounds, the occasional screen, and the deep route on a bootleg then I think there's going to be a real real intriguing spot for him I just want people because I've seen all kinds of different comps for him on Twitter and everywhere else that people kind of talk about the Browns and I just want people to have fair expectations for what Anthony Schwartz is supposed to be and what he could be I think sometimes we do get carried away during the draft season where you know optimism is at an all-time high for everybody in NFL right but also sometimes that optimism can put unfair expectations on a wide receiver or a player I think Anthony Schwartz is somebody who is dangerously approaching that right because people see 425 and they think of the only other fast guy that comes to mind when you think of somebody that fast which is Tyreek Hill and Anthony Schwartz is never going to be asked to be Tyreek Hill, and I don't think he's going to be Tyreek Hill because what Tyreek Hill is is not a fast wide receiver first and foremost. He's a great route runner. He's a great catcher of the football, right? Elite hands, elite ball skills, elite explosiveness and quickness, which Anthony Schwartz is quick. He's not as quick as Tyreek Hill, and Tyreek Hill plays insanely fast on the field, right? Sometimes Anthony Schwartz, especially when you get the ball in his hand early and he has some space, he can really accelerate to that 4-2-5 speed, but he doesn't play at that speed all the time. If you look at Tyreek Hill, like he plays at 4-2-5s like all the time. That's why he looks and plays so fast. So I think people kind of making that comp to Tyreek Hill Let's relax a little bit. Tyreek Hill is a, is a very, very talented, insanely skilled wide receiver who just happens to be super fast and short. Anthony Schwartz, on the other hand, is somebody whose main trait is being super fast. So I don't think those two comparisons are comparable. I think somebody like Mike Wallace, Bashad Perriman, um, even Hollywood Brown, those are more comparable comparisons. Like Ted Ginn Jr. at the high end, you know, those are the kind of comps that I would see out of him those are the guys that I think are very similar to Anthony Schwartz so I'm not down on him by any means I just think his role and what he's asked to do is much different than what a lot of people uh, when they see 425 speed think he's going to be now let's talk about some of the guys I think are going to be on the bubble my first guy that's going to be on the bubble this shouldn't be any surprise is Dearness Johnson the Browns drafted Demetric Felton and it's no fault of Dearness because I felt like Dearness played well in spots where he was asked to play last year it's just a question of logistics when it comes to Dearness Johnson right Dearness can return kicks and Dearness can be your third running back but Demetric Felton, they hope, can return kicks, be your third running back, and be an occasional wide receiver because he did that at UCLA. So if you have somebody who can do three things from that third running back position, let's be honest, the third running back, probably not going to get a ton of snaps unless something goes horribly wrong because you do have Kareem Hunt and you do have Nick Chubb. Then the question is, well, how do you want to utilize that third running back role? Do you want this guy to be somebody who you have – a bunch of uses for outside of just being the third running back and if there's a tiebreaker if Demetric Felton can be a decent runner of the football in year one as well as add value in the pass game as well as be a good kick returner then I think he'll have a roster spot and I think that will come um, at the expense of Dearness Johnson who I like a lot but you know this is just a logistic question right he can do three things Dearness can do two things if he can run just a little bit he's probably going to take that roster spot from Dearness so that's a guy I think is on the bubble and that's one guy on the bubble another guy I think is on the bubble is Mac Wilson and you know Mac Wilson has been in this weird spot for a couple of years now right coming into the season last year people were expecting him to make a leap he did not make a leap and actually got some DNPs last season, some healthy DNPs. Jacob Phillips was taking snaps over him at some point. Jacob Phillips was taking snaps over him at some points, and, you know, I think he is on a tricky path here with the Cleveland Browns. Now, a lot of people seem to just, like, think that it's taki-taki that's more at risk. 
I would say this. Look, Taki Taki's not a great coverage linebacker by any stretch of the imagination, but he does add some value when it comes to run stopping. And I don't think his roster spot is at risk, in my opinion, because there aren't a lot of linebackers on his roster that can stop the run like him. Like, yeah, you got JOK, you got Sione Taki Taki, Malcolm Smith's more of a pass specialist, Tony Fields, who they drafted in West Virginia, he's more of a pass coverage specialist. Jacob Phillips, I guess you can argue, could be a run stopper, but he wasn't a run stopper last year. He wasn't really one of the two things. Like, you only have one linebacker on this roster that that thing is ability to stop the run that we know from like he can do it in an actual NFL game so I think Taki Taki actually is pretty safe even though you know technically he does play well linebacker that is the spot that JOK plays I think you'll see some rotation but I think Taki Taki will be safe Mac Wilson on the other hand is a athletic linebacker he kind of fits the profile of what Andrew Barry is looking for but you know the instincts it's just been an issue right he overruns a lot of things we talk about sometimes linebackers cannot process as fast as they see it on the field that's why i like jok so much because he processes even faster than he runs and he runs pretty fast mac wilson on the other hand he runs much faster than he can process which either means either he's going to be late to things that he shouldn't be late to or he's just going to jump on things early trying to get a lead on it and be wrong or overrun a tackle which we saw him do a couple of times here right that's been an issue with mac wilson He's had his issue, you know, um, and it's going to be interesting to see how Mac gets out of this one, right? Because the Browns are drafting linebackers. They're clearly trying to overturn that room. They brought back Malcolm Smith, so he's going to get his playing time. They signed Anthony Walker, so you think he's going to get playing time. Taki Taki seems pretty set to get his playing time because, again, he's the only dedicated run-stopping linebacker on this team. They drafted JOK in the second round. They drafted Tony Fields in the fourth, and they drafted Jacob Phillips last year, so that's six linebackers already. The Browns did not keep more than six linebackers last year at any point during the season so you would assume that he has to take a job from one of those six guys and it ain't gonna be JOK it's not gonna be Anthony Walker it's not gonna be Malcolm Smith so you're talking about him having to beat out Jacob Phillips the only Taki Taki or Tony Fields Jacob Phillips and Tony Fields are both draft picks of Andrew Barry so that's an uphill battle for him to climb the only other guy he's gonna be able to battle it out with is Sione Taki Taki and again Sione Taki Taki he doesn't do everything well, but he does do that one thing well, stopping the run. He does that very well. At this point, Mac Wilson hasn't been able to specialize in that same way, so it's going to be another uphill battle. And what Mac Wilson is theoretically good at and what he has shown flashes of being good at is being a good coverage linebacker. He just has a lot of competition in that room, right? Tony Fields is a good coverage linebacker. JOK is supposed to be an excellent coverage linebacker. Malcolm Smith was one of the best coverage linebackers in the NFL. He's already, you know, fighting for Tony Fields' spot, if that's going to be the case. Um, and when it comes to the run-stopping thing, he's just never been a great run-stopping linebacker in his tenure with the Browns, so that's going to be an uphill battle for him. The last guy I think is going to be um, on the spot for a roster spot or at least on the chopping block for a roster spot is greedy williams now i don't think greedy will be cut i think it would be or there would have to be an amazing turn of events or greedy would have to be kicking and screaming for him to be cut i don't think he's going to get cut but i do think he's battling for a starting spot and i do think whether he wins his starting spot or not is going to be huge for the rest of his career right whether he has a long career or whether he doesn't um because this is a big moment for him right the Browns drafted Gregory Newsom he's going to be competing with Gregory Newsom at that second corner spot and at this time since he's coming off that nerve damage and he didn't win his last two battles with Terrence Mitchell um, when it came to those position battles you have to ask yourself is he really going to beat out Greg Newsom um, and is he going to be healthy during this season because if he's not he's just one of those guys who unfortunately could be left behind despite them having immense potential because the Browns just are at a place now to where they can't wait on Greedy to get healthy, right? They can't wait for Greedy to get more experience. And if there is somebody who's ready to go right now, 
it's going to be that guy, and that could be Greg Newsom. And if they're both not ready, it's going to be Troy Hill. So since that is the case, right, and Greedy has such little games played in his NFL career, this is going to be a crossroads moment for his NFL career. Um, if he wins this spot out, gets a lot of playing time, prove he's going to be a good player, he's probably going to get traded the next year um, to a team in a good situation for him, or he's going to be able to get in free agency, get some decent money when his contract is up, which is going to be good for greedy he's going to have a long career but if he's not able to win this battle at the second corner position then you know it's going to be a dark path for him you're talking about hopefully hooking on with the team eventually you're talking about not having a ton of playing time or tape available for you when you are a free agent it's going to be a rocky path for him so for greedy williams this is going to be a pivotal position battle for him because this could really outline the rest of his career and that's going to be interesting to see what that battle is there's going to be a ton of interest interesting position battles during training camp for the Cleveland Browns. I just think those three are going to be some of the more interesting guys to watch to see if they're going to be bubble guys or not. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What do you think about Anthony Schwartz and the value that he brings to this team? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you think about Anthony Schwartz, what the value he's going to bring to this team and the role he's going to play? And also, what do you think about the three guys I said may have an issue getting playing time on this roster? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But again, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have a good night.